Tell me about your cultural readings today. Um, the cultural reading was over Hedetaru and Najimu, which is are two different verbs. Um, Hedetaru is to distance oneself from another um, person or for, some, for something. So um, it's kind of, yeah, I guess, dist distancing oneself or not becoming close to another person. And then Najimu is that uh, opposite, is to come, become close with somebody. Um, basically to have your relationship kind of grow and become closer and stronger, more intimate. Um, and so it kind of deals with personal space, but not so much as a... It does talk about the issue of actual physical personal space uh, in Japan, but also it talks kind of about... Uh, it speaks more about just the different kind of activities and the different things that people will talk about, uh, depending on what level of friendship they have and how close they are and kind of what factors prevent people from coming together and how the Japanese break through that kind of barrier so that they can have personal connections. Tell me about that. Well, how do they break down some of those barriers? One of the first uh, questions posed was, how do you think that the practice of going and drinking, um, kind of like social drinking, works in Japan, and is it you know, a system of this Hedetaru and Najimu? And I said that, it kind of, it, it works as a social lubricant to make, you know, lessons inhibitions between people, and so people are more freely able to converse and maybe, you know, engage in activities that they wouldn't normally do based on their level of friendship. So it kind of brings people a little closer together, and also there's, you know, the physical aspect of all sitting around a table together uh, and being, you know, waited on by a host. It all, it brings everyone who's in the group into one, um, you know, very close assembly. And so they share conversation, they share drinks, and this kind of just, it breaks down the barrier that's hedetari, which is the noun form of hedetari. Uh, so it's, um, it's kind of a, like I said, like a social lubricant that kind of greases the years on a machine that is, you know, social relations. For communication, sure. And so tell me about, Japanese don't just turn to somebody next to them and go, hey, how you doing? And right. start a conversation and become friends. How do they handle that amongst students? Um, well, it said that there's a, two kind of different ways. One kind of popular way, and this comes up a little later, is that um, they take like school excursions or even businesses take like business excursions where they're taken out of their normal environment so that it's more appropriate to you know, find common ground to kind of com converse with somebody else and to greet and talk to other people. But there's also um, a lot of times kind of like a small token of getting to know you. Uh, and it's kind of a more acceptable way to approach um, becoming friends with someone. You don't necessarily, it's kind of seems backwards in America, like in Western culture, to give somebody a gift before you even know them. Um, but it's kind of like, yeah, it's like a token of wanting to get to know another person. Uh, and by giving the gift, you kind of let it out to the public that, yes, I would like to, you know, become friends with you. And this is kind of like a, Starter to that. As Japanese people become closer to one another, what do we start to observe in their relationships? There's obviously like a physical change in how the, how they um, are seen together. Uh, like a lot of times they'll you know walk closer together. There's less of a important. There's less of an emphasis placed on like how far away they are from each other. Uh, and you know it's not uncommon necessarily for two people to be talking to each other from a distance, you know, of like across the table distance at all times um, in Japan. Whereas in Western cultures, there are still some cultures that kind of keep that, you know, one foot, two foot distance. But there's a lot of other, especially Latin American cultures, uh, European cultures where, you know, talking it takes place, you know, face to face. Um, so you see differences in the way that people kind of come together. Um, and also the different activities that they do, it's not you know, necessarily acceptable for you to invite someone over to your house or especially inside, you know, inside your house or something uh, if it's the first time you meet them. But once friends, you know, once they do break down that barrier and become friends, then it becomes acceptable for them to, like, invite them inside their home. And by inviting them inside their home, it's kind of like welcome, it's a welcome to their world because in, in Japanese cultures, like, the home is considered the center of, like, the people or the center of a family, and the center of, like, one's personal life, and everything outside is, like, unrelated. 
so by inviting someone else into their personal life, they, uh, it's kind of the definition of a friend. Tell you about the physical distance you were talking about before between people talking and things like that. Um, I think the kind of golden rule in Japan is 90 centimeters um, is the perfect distance, they say. Uh, there was some scholar, I don't remember his name, but mm -hmm. he had this saying that all the samurai's retainers would recite that was, you know, I must stay 90 centimeters away from my master. Um, and that's almost like a sign of respect in Japan, too, is to maintain distance from somebody to kind of show that they're above you so you're not necessarily on the same level and you're not able to interact with them so um, intimately. Um, but it's definitely different, I think, in Western cultures. I think that for the most part, um, one foot is kind of average, especially when you're talking to so Obviously, there's a lot of situations where you don't become very close to another person whenever you're talking to them. But even with, like, say, teachers or classmates, it's not uncommon to be talking just, like, a foot away from the other person. Mm -hmm. um, and in cultures, again, like in Latin America, uh, also in um, the Middle East, it's common to kind of talk very close to each other. Um, so there's definitely cultural differences across the world between what is deemed kind of an acceptable distance. But also, I think that while there's not necessarily, like, a rule one foot is very common in America. I think that the Japanese really take it into consideration at all times. They're actually worried, like, they're consciously thinking and worried about maintaining that distance. But I think that it's kind of a natural thing for, um, for people in a Western culture because it's not such a infringement to be close to another person. Uh, it's not so much of, like, a conscious worry on, you know, people in a Western culture. But again, there are times when you know, people are seen as kind of invading. Like you, someone could be labeled as ignorant of kind of social protocol and invading if they're... Cultural nuance. Right. Social nuance. If they come too close and especially uh, if they're unable to read that their closeness or their proximity is throwing the other person off, then they're kind of considered to be like invading or ignorant. Right. Um, or selfish on the other regard. Yeah. You know... Um, so, yeah, a lot of times that in, in foreign cultures and Western cultures, the amount of distance between people can also be used for as a measurement of, of manipulation or control. Mm -hmm. So that, that's probably the other end of that. Now, in Japan, how is it different just total strangers striking up a conversation versus, say, in America? Well, I think in America, the, like, most, the way most people begin in some kind of... Uh, relationship or, um, you know, become a little bit closer is they just find some kind of similar circumstance and talk about it. And I think I, I gave the example of, like, you're at a bus stop and your bus is late and everybody's kind of twiddling their thumbs and then you can look over to the person next to you and say, man, I hope I'm not late to work because I was really hoping this bus would be on time. And that's kind of, I mean, it's not seen, nobody's going to think that you're weird for randomly talking to another person because you're both in the same situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and even still, there's not like a really huge bias against, uh, you know, talking to somebody else just as a friendly, courteous, kind of courteous yeah, measure. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're in kind of an awkward situation, sometimes it's considered polite to strike up a conversation just to pass the time and make it seem a little less um, awkward. Because Americans are terribly uncomfortable with silence. Right, we don't like silence at all. So then, in conversely, if we're at a Japanese bus stop, how normal would it be for people to strike up conversations? Not terribly normal. And of course, the most the most acceptable things to kind of talk about with the complete stranger are the weather, sports, the kind of meaningless conversation, as we call it in you know, uh, Western cultures. Just things that are very common, have nothing to do with oneself or person, uh, or person. just very, very general and common things. Um, but even still, it's not, because the Japanese actually value si silence um, a lot more than they value communication, or at least mm -hmm. verbal communication, um, it's, it's not that uncommon for two people to just sit and not talk to each other. It's considered a sign of respect also to allow someone to hold their thoughts into themselves and to not share their opinion because, again, nobody wants to lose face. And anytime you, you know, have a conversation, there's a chance of 
someone losing face, so it's considered respectful to allow somebody to just hold their composure and retain their thoughts without having to spill their private life out, you know. And it's something that, as Americans, we don't think it's very... We're very free with sharing information. Um, Almost too free. um, Yeah, it's definitely a problem, especially with the Internet age and everything. But um, the Japanese, on the other hand, have a lot more restrictive sense of what is private information versus what is public information. So even things like names, you know, ages family members, all those kind of things that are kind of like common to talk about um, in Western cultures are kind of considered like intrusive questions for the Japanese. Right.